name is Brittany Thomas, and today my colleagues and I will be discussing and demonstrating a craniocervical flexion exercise progression. Craniocervical flexion is achieved through activation of the deep cervical muscles, longus coli and longus capitis. These two anterior neck muscles are responsible for stabilizing the cervical spine. Therefore, impaired recruitment of either muscle may cause loss of proper cervical spine segmental alignment, leading to pain and faulty postures. This exercise is indicated for persons who exhibit a forward head posture, impaired cervical strength or range of motion, symptoms of neck pain, either chronic, nonspecific, or due to whiplash associated disorder, cervicogenic headache, or TMJ dysfunction. While there are no specific contraindications to craniocervical flexion exercises, care should be taken to closely monitor pain and possible compensation throughout the progression to ensure inappropriate tissues are not being strained. Research supports the efficacy of this specific exercise approach to reduce neck pain symptoms and increase activation of the deep cervical mus musculature. Jewel et al. in 2008 demonstrated that subject who subjects who showed the greatest improvement in the activation of deep cervical flexor muscles also showed the greatest amount of pain relief from the training intervention. Additionally, training specifically the longus capitis and coli in women with chronic neck pain has been shown by Fala et al. in 2012 to reduce pain and improve activation of these muscles. In this study, subjects with chronic neck pain completed six weeks of a craniocervical flexion exercise program, two times per day for 10 to 20 minutes, and those who showed the greatest improvement in the activation of the deep cervical flexor muscles also showed the greatest amount of pain relief for the training intervention. Lutch in 2013 conducted a similar study confirming these results. Craniocervical flexion exercises are typically initiated with the patient positioned in supine hook line with a neutral spine. The patient is then instructed to perform a gentle small head nod bringing the chin down to the neck, using the external acoustic meatus as the axis of rotation. The therapist might say, nod your head like you are saying yes, or make a double chin. It may also be helpful to have the patient place their fingers on the sternocleidomastoid muscle belly and instruct the patient that if this muscle fires, a smaller motion is desired. Once the correct motion is achieved, that patient will hold each nod isometrically for 10 seconds, return to neutral, and repeat for three sets of 10. To progress the exercise, increase the amount of sets or repetitions, increase the amplitude of the nod by applying more pressure behind the neck while down-regulating SCM activity, have the patient perform the exercise in sitting or standing, or isometrically hold the position and introduce movement of the arm to do functional activities. To monitor a patient's progress or provide visual feedback, a biofeedback pressure cuff can also be used. A blood pressure cuff works nicely in this situation. The patient performs the exercise as previously mentioned, this time maintaining a constant pressure on the blood pressure cuff. The exercise can be adjusted to increase strength, increase the pressure of each repetition, or increase endurance by increasing the time of isometric contraction at a constant pressure. The patient can expect to perform craniocervical flexion exercises two times a day for five to 10 minutes for about eight weeks, adding progressions as appropriate. It is expected that the longus coli and longus capitis will hypertrophy via the overload principle, thus improving their strength and endurance for stabilizing the cervical spine. With improved stabilization and posture correction, the hope is that the pain will decrease. Now my colleague Sarah will demonstrate craniocervical flexion progression on Taylor. Hi Taylor, my name is Sarah Kramer. I'll be your physical therapist today. How Hi. are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So today I'm going to teach you a series of craniocervical flexion exercises to strengthen the muscles on the front of your neck, deep in, next to your spine, okay? So when these muscles aren't working properly, your head can be in positions where it's compromising the stability of the spine, causing some pain. So the hope is that when we strengthen these 
these muscles, it puts your spine into more proper alignment and decreases the pain. Okay? Okay. So let's get started with you lying flat on your back and your knees bent. And I want you in a nice neutral position here with your neck. And what you're going to do is a small nod, just like this, kind of like you're making a double chin or nodding yes. Think about an axis going right through your ears that your head is rotating on, okay? To help you with this, you can place some fingers on the muscles on the front of your neck here, the superficial muscles called the sternocleidomastoid. If this muscle's firing, that means you're making too big of a motion. So I want you to quiet that muscle make a smaller motion. How does that feel? Good. Okay, now I want you to nod and hold the nod for 10 seconds. Good, and relax. And we would repeat this exercise for uh, three sets of 10 repetitions holding each isometric contraction for 10 seconds. So now that you've mastered this exercise laying on your back, we're going to increase the challenge and get into more functional positions. So go ahead and sit on the edge of the table here. And I want you to again make that small chin tuck nod, making sure you're keeping a nice posture here. So I'm going to place my fingers on the front of your neck to make sure you're not firing these superficial muscles. go through the same series holding each isometric contraction for 10 seconds for three sets of 10 repetitions. How do you feel? Good. Any pain replication? No. Okay. Now that you've mastered sitting on the side of the table, we're going to move into standing. So go ahead and stand and get in your nice neutral posture. Looking straight ahead, let's do that same chin nod. Again, we would do the same amount of sets and repetitions in this position. To further caress the exercise, we can move into more functional tasks like reaching. So Taylor, what I want you to do is hold that chin knot, and I'm going to hold this towel roll in front of you, okay. and I just want you to reach up alternating arms grabbing the towel roll, okay? So go ahead and maintain that chin knot. So I want you to practice this at home during functional tasks, maintaining that nice neutral posture. It should be known that these arm movements can be added in any position, when you're lying flat, when you're sitting, or when you're standing, to increase the intensity of the exercise. So with any exercise program, uh, you can expect some soreness of the muscles. So you might feel some soreness in the front of your neck, but this should go away and it shouldn't be replicating your neck. Okay. And also, like any exercise program, it's important that you're compliant with the exercises and keep doing them at home so that we can overload the muscles and make them stronger and more endurance so they can hold your head in that neutral posture and decrease the pain. Okay? How does that sound? 